Hello and welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. This week is, apparently, Kraken Week. Kraken Week was thought up by the content creators Pointy Hat and Ginny D, and the idea is that creators in the tabletop role-playing sphere should all post something relating to sea monsters or the sea in general. Think Shark Week, but with more legs. I am not officially involved with Kraken Week, but it is an open invitation deal. And being as I have been known to cover a bit of Dungeons & Dragons here on the channel, I thought I might as well get involved. Fortunately, a few months back, the lovely folk over at Steamforge Games sent me a review copy of their local Legends Ghost Pirate Encounter set, a really fun mini encounter compatible with the 5th edition of D&D that comes with miniatures, a battle map, and a rules booklet packed with good ideas. I have actually already covered the Ghost Pirate Encounter in a previous review, which I have linked to in the video description below. I talked about what it is, what it contains, and how you can incorporate it into your own adventures, with or without the use of the excellent local Legends Tavern kit but what I didn't do was paint the miniatures. So let's do that today. Now, I know from personal experience that dungeon masters are busy folks, and finding the time to paint miniatures isn't always easy. That's why I am always looking for quick and painless ways to get miniatures coloured and ready for use with minimal fuss. In fact, many years ago I used to run a series called 10 Paints or Less, where I would paint stuff up by using only... well, I think you can figure it out. The idea wasn't to win awards, it was to get miniatures looking decent for the tabletop easily. So in the spirit, pun intended, of that old series, I am going to paint the Ghost Pirate using as few paints as possible. Six, to be exact. The Ghost Pirate, which I obviously lovingly refer to as LeChuck, is a fantastic sculpt with lots of great detailing and a wide open stance. So if you wanted to do a traditional paint job on him, it's relatively easy. But for me, I'm going to take inspiration from the green colouring of his art on the box and then ramp up the brightness for a classic Scooby-Doo villain scheme. First things first, we are going to do some base coating using three different rattle cans. You can use an airbrush if you prefer, but I don't even own an airbrush. To start, I'm going to use Chaos Black and I'm going to completely coat the miniature. This is going to give something for the rest of our paint to adhere to and it's also going to provide some dark recessed shading, which will help to add detail without a lot of effort later on. Then I am going to grab a can of necrotic flesh from Army Painter, and I am going to do a spray on the top and exposed parts of the miniature. You might see this sort of method being called a zenith or highlight, but I am being a little more heavy handed than that because of the translucent paints I will be using in a moment. The idea though is to start layering up some green coloration and to help raise details to pop. Finally, I am going to do another heavy zenith or highlight with matte white spray from Army Painter, trying to hit all the top parts of the miniature, the most exposed open parts and the face. I really need to get a lot of white on the miniature so the final effect is quite bright, but of course the trick is to make sure the bottom part of the miniature and all of the recesses keep the darker coloration. And it may look in the video like I have completely covered the previous green layer, but I haven't. It is still showing through in places and will help to add variation and depth to the colour I am applying next, Hex Wraith Flame. This is a technical paint from Citadel which gives an ethereal green glow to your miniatures. I am going to apply a good coat of this over the entire miniature. I need to make sure the paint gets absolutely everywhere, but this is the important bit, I don't want it to pool in the recesses. If it pulls too much, you will get blotches of very bright non-translucent green that will obscure details and just doesn't look good. Note that I am also painting the scenic base in the same way as the ghost. I am assuming the tentacle and shattered nautical remains are all part of the apparition, but you can paint them as real elements if you prefer. But if you wanted to, if games night was looming and you really didn't have any more time, you could leave the miniature like this. It already has a fun ethereal Scooby Doo vibe. However, I am going to do a little more to bring out some of the lovely details in this sculpt. For this, I will be using Coelia Green Shade, which is an excellent dark green wash. I am going to use this to line in all the fine details of the miniature, running it into and around any creases and folds in the clothing, as well as using it to pick out the excellent detailing on the pirate's coat. In places, I will also thin the wash and pull it away from the darkest recesses to create a sort of blended gradient into the much brighter hex red flame on the more exposed parts of the miniature. Additionally, I am going to put Coelia green shade around the lowest part of the coat and then drag it upwards, gradually adding a little water to again make a blended transition. And you don't need to be too fussy, just don't overdo it and create lots of runs and streaks across the model. It's better to do less than more. But once you are happy, you may have something that looks like this, which I am rather pleased with. 
The colouring is vibrant, but all the details show up well and the darkest recesses have some nice depth to them. It's not the most exciting colour scheme ever, but I do think it gives the impression of a ghostly creature. All that's left to do is colour the rim of the base. Normally I use black or brown for this, but in keeping with the green theme I am going to use Cabalite Green. This is a layer paint so it will require two thin coats to get suitable coverage. I will of course use exactly the same paint scheme for the Ghost Pirate Spectral Crew, and here they are all together. I think they look kind of cool. I know we haven't done anything special and there are many ways we could have tackled these sculpts, but I rather like this green look and I think you could do something very similar for Ghosts in Age of Sigmar, or even if you are facing down a painting table full of Army of the Dead miniatures from Lord of the Rings. Naturally, there is also a lot more you could do. Perhaps add white glowing eyes, paint the scenic bases naturally, pick out the weapons, flotsam and jetsam in brown and metallics, do another round of highlighting, perhaps dry brushing or edge highlighting with white. But I am leaving these as they are. They are more than good enough for the tabletop, and if I stop now, I'll just make it in time for last orders at the Salt and Kraken. There's some rum waiting for me behind the bar, and old Jack will be hunched by the fire, smoking his pipe, and telling tales of the monstrous sea creature he has been hunting for the past 40 years. But that guy's crazy, right? Wherever your next adventure takes you, on land or sea, travel safely. And as always, if you like the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.